and the 3rd of February, 1950, they put our crew on a C-54 and flew us up to Allison Air Force Base in Alaska. <clears throat> And we were to wait for our ferry crew to bring a B-36 up there. To, we were to fly a 25-hour mission on. And this was early in the B-36 program, and they had a lot of maintenance problems. And it took them 10 days to get an airplane ready and get it up there. And during that 10 days, three of the gunners and one radio operator sat in the barracks and played bridge. It was 40 below zero outside, and one of the gunners, uh, Pollard, had been a prisoner of war in Germany. He was shot down over there, and he read all the books on playing bridge, and he taught us how to play bridge. So we, we played bridge about 12 hours a day for 10 days. We finally got an airplane up there, and, and uh, started out on the mission. We were to fly down the west coast and oh, about a few hours into the mission, I, I was on the bunk at first and I kept dozing off and going to sleep and I'd dream about playing bridge, what else? But I'd open up a hand and be a joker in it. <laughs> this happened two or three times. Well, I finally told a gunner pottered in the left blister that he might as well lay down and I got in the blister and that's when all the trouble started. We started icing up <clears throat> and, well, I didn't tell you about the, the B-36 engine. It's a real great engine, but when they turned it around and put the props on the back of the wing, that put the carburetor up front. And now there was our problem. We started icing up, the carburetors started icing up and caused the too rich a mixture and it was, wasn't all burning in cylinders, it was burning in the exhaust tank. It burned through them and, and the engine wouldn't have very much power either. We, we tried to climb to get out of that. And I think we started out from 12,000 and we got up to about 17,000 before we lost those three engines and we started losing altitude. Well, at that point, Captain Barry told us that we're going to have to bail out and he had been briefed to go out over water and get rid of a bomb we were carrying. We, we were carrying an all atomic bomb. It, it didn't have the plutonium core to make it work, but it still had some atomic material in it and we needed to get rid of it. And we went out of the water and dropped it and it exploded in the air, a conventional explosion, not atomic, destroying mechanisms, what it was. And we turned around and went back toward land and I decided that I wanted to put a Mae West on. Well, the other guys, they looked at me like I'm crazy because we had talked about this before. And, you know, if you hit in that cold water, you're gone anyway. So why wear a Mae West? Well, I guess the reason I did it was because I'd rather freeze to death than drown. I, I think drowning. <laughs> anyway, I put this, had to take my shoot off, put the May West on, put the shoot on over. Well, it started to bail out then. I, I'm trying to buckle my chest strap and I can't get it fastened. So I said, well, I don't have time to make adjustments. I fastened it under the May West. I got out of the airplane, I couldn't find my D ring. <laughs> well, thank God my memory was better then than it is now. <laughs> I remember what I did, so I reached under there and got it. And, and I made about two oscillations and hit in a tree. I, I guess I was real, well, I know I was real fortunate. I, I didn't get a scratch 
and I felt it was total darkness. I couldn't see nothing. Didn't have a flashlight. Felt like a tree trunk right in front of me, and I felt like I was standing on a big limb. So I carefully got out of my parachute, <laughs> and I was going to climb down, and that limb turned out to be an exposed root. I was on the ground. <laughs> I inflated my May West and got under it. I got a little sleep, not much. But the next morning I climbed up in the tree to try to get my parachute down and I couldn't get it. So while I was up there, I yelled and someone answered me. I think it was the radio operator. And I told him to stay put. I was coming to where he was. But he took me until about four o'clock in the afternoon to get there. Yeah. Snow was about knee deep, and I come to a pond. I was going to inflate my one man day and go across that pond, but there was slush under, about four inches under the water. And I got in that dinghy and it settled down in that, and I couldn't go nowhere. I left it there and I, I walked around that pond. Well, they had, when I joined the other people, it, it was a radio operator, one gunner, a navigator, and a colonel. He was an observer out of the Pentagon. They had built a teepee and had a fire going <laughs> of a sort. It was mostly smoke. Everything was wet. You couldn't get anything to burn. Anyway, I was with some people and I felt better. And we decided to wait till the next morning to walk out, and hoping some others would join us, but they didn't. And we walked out the next morning and Canadian fishing boat. Well, before we got out, we found some tracks of two other people walking out, and there was a pilot and co-pilot, Barry and Whitfield. And uh, they had trampled out an SOS in the snow and put some branches in so people could see us from there, but it, it was socked in all the time. We never seen an airplane. We, we could hear them flying over, but we couldn't see them. But this Canadian fishing boat, I, I want to say the name of that boat, I was trying to remember that today, it was Cape Perry, but I'm not sure about that. I remember the, the captain's name was Vance King. But these Canadians, they really treated us nice. They, they put a little boat over the side and come and picked us up. We hopped in that boat off a big old rock. <laughs> they gave us coffee laced with rum. I thought that was the best drink I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> well, they transferred us to a, a Coast Guard boat and a PBY-5 come and picked us up, carried us down to Port Hardy. Port Hardy, it was a C-119, carried us on down into Washington State. Uh, I can't remember the base. But we stayed in the hospital overnight and at C-54 back to Carswell. Now this, this happened Local time, it was still the 13th, but we always said it happened on the 14th because at our home station in Carswell, it was the 14th. It was close to midnight on the 13th. 